Hi everybody, Jeff Yastine here. Make sure to subscribe to our Wealth Press YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, it's Jeff Yastine One, and on Twitter, the handle is at Jeff Yastine. So I want to swing us back around to a stock that I first talked about on September 1st. And I think, uh, I'll tell you the stock here in a second, but I think it's a good example of something that we often lose sight of when it comes to investing and speculating. And that is the idea of, of, of allowing a stock time to, uh, to, to adjust and to, to move higher. So often when we buy a stock, we're almost coached these days to expect immediate uh, reinforcement. And it's just, I guess, part of the, the society we're in. But the problem is that quite often the stocks we buy don't immediately move higher. Uh, and often we're buying them at a peak. And the stock I'm going to tell you about here is one that I recommended actually at a peak. But the reason why I still like it is because the background uh, fundamentals of the business uh, continue to improve. And I think the stock is beginning to now show that. So the name of the stock is Rignet, R-N-E-T. And this is a look at the, uh, the chart of Rignet. And as you can tell, uh, I, I recommended it uh, back on, I think it was September 1st. So basically I recommend it pretty much here at the peak. And from that point to now is basically the stock's down about 14%. And really if you measure it fully from the peak to uh, the, the most recent uh, bottom of the stock, you're talking about a pullback of around 37%. And that's important to, to note here because for so many of the stocks that, uh, that you're going to buy or, or speculate in, you're going to see pullbacks like this and sometimes more. And that's why I've tried to say uh, as much as I can that often in successful investing, it's as much about how much you buy and in my view, when you buy one of these things, you should be buying with almost the expectation that there's going to be a pullback of some kind because so often there is. And a lot of the process is basically waiting out the pullback so that the stock then begins to move higher. And I think that's what we're beginning to see here with Rignet. And that's why I'm bringing it back to your attention because the shares are beginning to act better, which is what you want to see with stocks where you feel like the analysis is, uh, is playing out the way you expected. So let's talk briefly about what RigNet does. As the name implies here, RigNet provides uh, communications data connectivity in what you would basically say are harsh operating environments. So onshore oil drilling platforms, offshore oil drilling platforms, and really the company's expanded its sort of portfolio of that kind of operations to really any company that has sort of a heavy industrial, heavy machinery sort of operating environment. And the reason why is because uh, so much of our machinery these days, an increasing amount, is connected to the Internet. It's the Internet of Things. And that's why I talk about RigNet being an Internet of Things play, because it's providing that communications, secure communications uh, connection between the equipment and the, the cloud, so to speak, and the data systems that are providing the analytics. You know, somebody back at headquarters who's watching all this to make sure that the pumps and the equipment and everything else are operating according to uh, parameters. So with RigNet, it provides that kind of uh, service to, uh, yes, energy companies. So the higher oil prices go uh, from here, and uh, as we look at this chart of, of crude oil since, uh, since May, uh, which is pretty much the bottom uh, where oil briefly went as a commodity, <laughs> went into the negative column. But since then, you can see where, frankly, if this were any other kind of chart, you would say you would want to buy this because the chart is pointing towards higher prices. And uh, it's really only owing to the fact that it's oil and it's a very out-of-favor commodity that I think you're finding a lot of traders standing on the sidelines. But I do expect that uh, over time, you will see the rest of Wall Street warm up to the idea that oil as an energy source, as a commodity, as something to buy and trade and to watch, it's important to uh, the economy, they will warm up to that because uh, the other key I want to show you is uh, this chart, 
which is showing us the uh, number of, of rigs that are in production in North America. And I can assure you that the global chart looks very much the same, where you can see that according to this data, which is from the uh, U.S. Energy Information uh, Administration, you know, they're the folks who keep track of important energy data for uh, federal reports and for the, uh, for the government and for industry, that the number of rigs that are in operation in North America is at uh, record lows. And because of that, we are going to see in coming quarters basically a, uh, a lack of supply in the oil market as the economy begins to warm back up again as these COVID vaccines uh, basically help have their you know, very beneficial impact on society and on consumers and on business. Over time, we're going to see more energy and oil consumption. And on the supply end, where the rigs are, you're going to see sort of a bottleneck, which means higher oil prices. And that's why I continue to go back to the idea of oil prices as a key focus for all of us to watch. And if you see here again, this is the big negative drop into, into negative uh, territory below zero at the, the very bottom of the, the pandemic as far as oil is concerned. And this is what we're looking at now as of uh, you know, late this week with oil at $42 a barrel. I like the look of things from here. So as a final uh, note here, I just want to go back to the chart for RigNet. And if we zoom out a little bit, you'll see that obviously this stock is down quite a bit from even a year ago. And if we zoom out even more, and it looks a little better if I go to a weekly chart, each of these bars on here is basically uh, one week's worth of data. You can see this stock is, has gotten hammered, obviously, since 2014, which was pretty much the peak in oil prices. And since then, we've seen this, this uh, very gradual but sustained move out of the entire energy sector. And any oil stock or energy stock I show you is basically going to look like this. The reason why I am back to focusing on it now is in part because of the rig data uh, for the number of rigs in operation that I showed you a moment ago. And the other part is the individual characteristics of this stock. And as you can see, it had a nice pop back in June, moved sideways, and then had another move higher. And I think the stock has moved sideways since then and is going to break higher in the months to come. So my overall point here is that sometimes it takes a while for a stock to, uh, to come around. It takes time for a stock to uh, uh, basically calls for us to have some patience with it. And this is true for many stocks. So keep that in mind as you move forward, not just whether you choose or, or have a position on with this stock or really any stock. Keep that in mind that not every stock is going to move forward the, the day you buy it or the week that you buy it. And quite often they will have this sort of sideways pattern to them. And it's important when you go into the trade to buy it at the right, uh, the right amount of shares so that you are not scared out of it on pullbacks like we've seen here with RigNet over the past uh, couple of months. If you like what I'm talking about, make sure to continue to follow us on YouTube. Follow me on social media as well. I'm Jeff Yastine.